Hi, I'm Dr. AJ Kumar. Um, so, I said I was going to work on OPHTTBD. There's kind of a project coming up that where I'm going to need to be able to do some web stuff quickly. And, well, OPHTTBD is something I need to do in the long term. Something more quickly is just learn one of the existing web frameworks in Erlang, which honestly is going to be better than anything I'm going to build, let's be honest. Um, might not be better than anything if I build something and then Craig fixes it, then that would pro probably be better, but um, we're gonna look. So, um, so I, I was just I was just kind of looking through the documentation, then realized I should turn on OBS. Let me uh, what what's going on here? Uh, there's two OBSs open. That's weird. Okay, it looks like I'm still recording. Anyway, um. So I'm not gonna get your sh shitty ebook, sorry. And O'Reilly is just, you know, it's funny. Um, I think I started noticing O'Reilly was publishing just these absolutely insane fake programming textbooks. Um, and but I don't mean that they weren't real textbooks. I mean that they were like, um, I, I I have a long rant at, or not a long rant. I have a. Uh, network of poorly articulated points about something I call fake programmers. And what I realized a couple days ago, and I've been composing a rant mentally in my head, which I'll put on the um, Entropism playlist, um, I, I'm calling it the tragedy of the bitwit, because um, I've started noticing the Bitcoin people are primarily composed of these really high testosterone midwits. And uh, then a friend of mine who's a, who's a crypto millionaire, who made millions of dollars by just fucking around with crypto. Um, I asked, I, I think Bitcoin is ridiculous. And um, it's just, so my, my basic idea there is that, okay, I looked at it, the idea, the idea is a good idea, it makes sense, but then you kind of look in the details of it, um, there's no way that this can possibly be used as a currency. Forget the volatility, that would go away if it was pegged to real goods probably. Um, the problem is the transaction bottleneck, seven transactions per second. Sorry, you can't use that as a currency. Well, then they'll come back and say, oh, well, it doesn't need to be used as a currency. It's a store of value. Okay, well, and then they say, well, okay, well, what, what value does it have if you can't use it? Oh, well, it's the same value as art. Everyone agrees. Their, their basic plan is to just uh, be as aggressive as possible and psyop people into believing that Bitcoin has value. And that might work, actually. I mean, the Bitcoin, the Bitwit culture has so much legs under it, and it's so aggressive that it, it, it I think it will last for quite a while. Um, I just, I don't, it, it's just something better is going to come along, right? So, something that does what Bitcoin can do um, and doesn't have all the stupid problems that Bitcoin has. Um, so my general thoughts about so any my general thought so let me talk about my general thoughts about crypto which has nothing to do with what I'm talking about here but I want to say it while it's still fresh in my mind I didn't really ha I knew about cryptocurrencies for you know pretty much since they were a thing um, I didn't really it didn't really interest me I didn't really look much into it around last year sometime it got to the point I couldn't ignore it so I looked into it I looked into it and said this is stupid and then didn't really look into it any further. What I think is when people start getting into these ridiculous speculation things, and this ties back into the fake programmer thing, um, Amazon has the, here, let me show you this one guy. Um, um, this guy. He has these wonderful, he, he's just one of many, many fake programmers. And I'm not trying to pick on him particularly. I actually really like this guy. He's pretty cool. Um, uh, now he's doing cryptocurrency based fake programming. Uh, for a while he was he was a shill, he was a paid shill for uh, Amazon. Uh, yeah, Amplify. Uh, he had this great video I saw here. Uh, let me find it. Nader, Dabit, uh, what, uh, what, what was he going to build? Twitch. Okay. He had this great um, live coding of a Twitch-like video streaming platform in React, and uh, I'm going to mute my audio so I don't get copyrighted, but uh, here. 
I looked at this and I'm like, this is 48 minutes long. What's up, everyone? So yesterday um, I was playing around. I was looking. I was looking at this and I'm like, there's there's no way. I know the complexity that goes. I, I, I or at least I have a little bit of an idea of the complexity that goes into something like that. And I'm like, there is no way you can code that in 48 minutes. Sorry, um, you you can't you can't code anything interesting in 48 minutes. And I, so I watched the video, and he just okay. First thing he does is he uses the Amazon interactive videos. <laughs> and I, I'm not trying again. I'm not trying to pick on this guy specifically. I like this guy. Um, but it's just like, okay, really, that's what you're doing. He's ba it's basically as complex as embedding a YouTube video in a website. And then, um, except you have to pay like $900 a month for it. Okay, then, then he gets the, um, let's see. Then he gets the, uh, yeah, so here he is embedding. They spend five minutes basically uh, in making accounts that cost $900 a month on Amazon. I don't know what it costs um, to get the chat service and the video streaming through AWS, and then that's the first five minutes of the video, and the uh, the next 45, the next whatever 43 minutes of the video are just fucking around with the style sheet. Um, yeah, so he starts with this, uh, then let's see. Uh, why the hell does React.js have anything about Blackline? Okay, what? So stupid. Right. I like his color scheme. Let's see. Where can we see the final thing? Yeah, it, it, okay. Wow, we're 45 minutes in and we still have terrible styling. Anyway, okay, so maybe there, maybe it's a, there's a little bit, there's probably more to this. The point is, you can't actually code a, uh, what was it, a, a Twitch clone in, 40, in 48 minutes. That's ridiculous. All of the interesting stuff he factored out um, and the entire point is he was paid, he used to be, he, he was open about this, he was employed by Amazon to sell their products and make these tutorials, and then Amazon's basic entire business model, is, it's the Microsoft model of sort of just trapping people. Um, and the, a good example of this was Parler, where Parler got kicked off of AWS and it just killed their business. I think Parler's back up somewhere, but nobody uses it. Um, I mean, that, that's what happens when you use AWS. You end up having to code against the AWS API so heavily, and then then you get kicked off, and then suddenly, hey. Um, and then the best part was they had just the most ironclad breach of contract case I've ever seen. The, the contract very clearly states, we have to give you 30 days notice before we kick you off. They didn't, and kicked them off with like 24 hours of notice. Uh, they sue for breach of contract. They have the most ironclad case I've ever seen. The contract says this. They did. The contract says X. They did not X. Give me our. Give us our money, uh, or you know, re or amend the contract or what, whatever the re relief was. And the judge says, "Lol, no, get out." That's the American court system. By the way, I mean. Anyway, none of that matters. Oh, what I was going to say is that. Um, the Bitcoin thing, the crypto thing, seems to be—it seems to be like the midwit version of following sports. Um, if you replace Bitcoin to 100k with the Yankees are going to win the World Series, the conversations are indistinguishable. Right? They start talking about the features of Bitcoin. Well, you know, it's like a Yankee fan telling me about Stanton and Judge and Garrett Cole and oh, uh, you know, you get all this stuff. The thing with the sports, though, is that there's a bullshit test. Um, once a year, there are these playoffs. Sometimes you don't even make the playoffs. You think your team's going to be great. They don't make the playoffs. Uh, or you think they're going to win the World Series. They don't win the World Series. Uh, your, your, the discussion is naturally moderated by this bullshit test. 
in cryptocurrency, there is no such bullshit test. And so the bullshit just grows and grows and grows. Um, and then the entire system runs on bullshit. Um, and, and I, I don't know how long that's going to last. Anyway, this is what uh, Taleb was talking about in Fat-Tailed versus Thin-Tailed. Right? The, the, thin the fat-tailed things sort of only get moderated by nature, which is crypto is sort of fat-tailed in that re regard, and baseball is thin-tailed in the sense that you're never going to have a team score 400 or 4,000 runs in a game, whereas you know, a, a Dogecoin will get 4,000 times its value in a day if Elon tweets. Or, you know, the banks could lose all of the money they've ever made in a single day, which I think happened in the 80s. Anyway, I wanted to look at the Erlang web frameworks, and so um, there's one called Nitrogen, which is more of a front-end thing. Um, I don't know how to explain it. I watched this talk a while ago by Jesse. Um, let's see. Interactive... Yeah. Uh, the only Erlanger I actually know is Craig. Um, I should probably introduce myself to more Erlangers. Um, anyway, the docu this is one problem with a lot of the Erlang stuff is, for whatever reason, their, docu their, their documentation is just, like, almost non-existent, typically. Um, and I, I'm very guilty of this. I have, like, no documentation for my projects, either. Anyway, Cowboy... Inets, oh, MokiWeb, that was the other one. So the reason I was going here, this is more of a front-end thing. I don't think this is for a... Uh, I don't think this is for, like, a back-end server. So... I, I, I'm sorry, I can't buy everyone's book. Um, I did go through the documentation here a while ago. Um... Um, yeah, so, anyway, the, the, the reason I was going here is because this works with the, with, uh, with all of the common backends, and then in, in particular it has a list. So, sorry, I gotta zoom in on this so you can read it. Cowboy, I looked at Cowboy, I read through the document, uh, nine, nines dot eu, that's right. I looked at Cowboy, and it looks fine, um, and Craig has very good things to say about Loic. Um, I, I, I think that's how you pronounce it. And then MokiWeb, I wanted to look into this. Or like a wiki. Welcome. Okay. See, this is. I'm sure there's doc. Document. Okay. Documentation somewhere for this, but um, I, I, you know, I'm an idiot. So, not cowboy looked interest. Cowboy looked like it is good, um, but it was kind of the document. Documentation was a little bit. Uh, sketchy. I don't want to say sketchy like it's good document, like, you know, it's, how do you do this? Here you go. How do you do this? Here you go. But uh, it was hard for me to sort of put it together and figure out how to get everything going. Yaws looks like it ha the guy has put a lot of effort into his documentation. Um, so, anyway, so we go to the top page. Let's just read it. I'm going to make OBS go away. Yaws is an HTTP an HTTP high performance 1.1. Okay, so I figured this out in the little bit of work I did with um, uh, OPHTTPD. 1.1 web server, particularly well suited for dynamic content web applications. Okay, two separate modes. I think uh, 
Cowboy does um, HTTP two as well as one point one. I don't think I don't think that uh, for what I have in mind, I don't think that the the HTTP protocol is a big bottleneck, but maybe. Um, anyway. Two separate modes of operations are supported. Where is my water? I don't know, I might need to stop the video and go get some water. Uh, two, stand two separate modes of operations are supported. Standalone mode, embedded mode. Yaws is written entirely in Erlang, and furthermore, it is a multi threaded web server where one lightweight Erlang process is used to handle each client. Okay. One thing I've noticed, he says web applications don't have to be written in ugly ad hoc languages. Um, I don't know what he's referring to there, but um, I did notice in the documentation he has invented his own domain-specific language. I noticed Cowboy sort of has its own domain-specific language as well. It's very small ones, but they're 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 there. Um, anyway, uh, so he has a bunch of examples here, which I like as somebody who's uh, stupid. But if we go to his documentation. Uh, the version, okay. There are several features. They are all described in the examples or man pages. All right. Let's just uh, let's just read through. Maybe I don't even know what soap is. What is soap? Let's read that. Excellent. Okay, I, I don't care about any of this. Um, I just want something simple where there's a lot of documentation and this looks like this looks like what I want. Um, and then I, I can I'll probably either use cowboy eventually. I don't know. figure something out. Um, oh there's my water. I got some water left. I take that coat off because it's too hot. <clears throat> Yaws, yet another web server by What the fuck? Class Wickstrom. It's probably a Swedish guy, because Erlang sort of starts with Ericsson, which is in Sweden. Class Wickstrode. Look at Swedes with their weird names. Anyway. Let's, uh, let's just go read this. I like, he's, all, he's also clearly using, this looks like the memoir template. Chapter 1, Introduction. YAWS is an Erlang web server. It's written in Erlang and it uses Erlang as its embedded language similar to PHP and Apache or Java and Tomcat. The advantages of Erlang as an embedded web page language. Yeah, I don't need to be convinced about Erlang. Um, I guess this is important to read if, if you're completely new to Erlang. Um, Erlang is the only language out there that has a, current, a concurrency model that actually makes sense. Um, every other language that has a concur that does concurrency, they they did a shitty rip off of Erlang, and their concurrency model sucks generally. And the reason is because what Erlang did is they built concurrency in fundamentally into the language. It is it is the fundamental idea of the language. It is a concurrency oriented programming language. Um, and once you realize that you have to build the language like that, you, you realize that if you work with it a little bit. 
And these other languages, what they do is they build a normal programming language and then try to add concurrency later, and you can't do that. Um, it just, it, you have to write the language from the bottom up, from the beginning, with every, de every design decision has to keep concurrency in mind. Um, and then if you write a language where every design decision keeps concurrency in mind, you basically write Erlang. Um, that's basically what happens. There's probably a couple other things you could do. You could probably add a real type system, but Erlang can't really be a language. It, it has to be a concurrent language has to sort of be dynamically typed. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, well, it does matter. So er Erlang is very, very fast um, in the sense that uh, I mean, it was built to run on just Gar garbage hardware and be very performant and handle, you know, five million phone calls on some tiny little switch. Yeah, so speed. Yeah, so Erlang has very good performance. Um, it's not going to be as good as C, but nothing is. Um, it's maybe if you write everything in assembly, but you still probably can't beat C. Um, Yeah, Erlang, um, beauty, this is subjective, scalability. Due to the lightweight processes of Erlang, Yaws is able to handle a very large number of concurrent connections, okay? Yaws has a wide feature set. It supports HTTP 1.0 and HTTP 1.1, static content page delivery, dynamic content generation using embedded Erlang code in the HTML pages, I don't know what that means. Traffic logs, okay. Virtual ho I don't know. Okay. That's nice. Wait, that's just that's just Erlang, isn't it? RAM cache, okay, that's nice. SSL, that's nice. I don't know what a WW authenticated page is. Um, cookie-based sessions. Uh, I don't know. I, I I kind of know what web sockets are, but not really. Okay. It, it. Underst. Okay. Sure. We introduce yaws by the help of a tiny example. The web server yaws serves and delivers static content pages similar to any old web server, except that yaws does this much faster than most web servers. Uh, did I download this? Uh, doesn't look like it. It's the dynamic pages that makes yaw. Okay, he's not a native speaker. I'm not going to get mad at his grammar. And I'm Indian, so I make grammar mistakes all the time, so it's fine. Um, the Elizabeth Warren kind of Indian, though. Uh, it's the dynamic pages that makes yaws interesting. Any page with the suffix dot yaws is considered a dynamic yaws page. A yaws page can contain embedded Erlang snippets that are executed while the page is being delivered to the www browser. Example 1.1 is the HTML code for a small yaws page. My, my man, you, have, you why don't you have hyperref? It illustrates the basic idea behind yaws. The HTML code generally stored in a file ending with .yaws suffix can contain arrow and end arrow tags. Inside these tags, an Erlang function called out gets called in the out one, and the output of that function is inserted into the HTML document dynamically. It is possible to have several chunks of HTML code together with several chunks of Erlang code in the same yaws page. The arg argument supplied to the automatically invoked out function is an Erlang record that contains various data which is interesting when dynamically generating pages. 
when gen generating dynamic pages. For example, the HTTP headers which were sent to the www client and the actual TCP IP socket leading to the www client. This will be elaborated on thoroughly in later chapters. The out1 function returned the tuple HTML string and string gets inserted into the HTML output. There are a number of different return values that can be returned from the out1 function in order to control the behavior and output from the YAWS web server. Figure one point. LST listing, go look at, hey, this, what's, what's this guy's name? Class. I'm just going to say it's class. I'm sorry if I'm, oh, I'm not mispronouncing it. You should, you should have been born in America if you wanted me to pronounce your name right. Okay. Go to my revelations. Re get gitlab.com slash Dr. AJ Kumar and copy the code for in frame.tech for the formatting for listings and use that because it looks much nicer and it also has things like line numbers and you can do syntax highlighting. Go do that. This is just amateur hour law tech here. Okay, HTML. Okay. Oh, that's it. That's interesting. Okay. That's what he means. How long is this? 74 pages. Okay. Compile, install. I'm going to go until I finish my uh, cup of tea here. Yaws is hosted on GitHub. Okay. I'm not going to install it in user local. No. Why do I have to be root? Really? Okay. I'm just scrolling this to see. Okay, so all right. Um Okay, I have Erlang installed. Um, I'll try to remember to link my uh, how to here. Uh, here, this video. Okay, it's. bitshoot.com slash video slash xlc8x Okay, I'll, I'll try to remember to link this um, below. That video will is how to install Erlang on Ubuntu and, and then you can adapt it to other systems if you want. Alright, let's just go to the GitHub and try to figure this out. So that's fine. I'm sure somebody else is like
your CD build. Try to zoom in. Let's just do auto reconf. I have no idea what this does, but I'll just trust this guy. Okay. I can't just copy. Craig was right about rebar. Alright. Okay, I'm just gonna start off. I'm just gonna start over again. Um... 
um, I don't want to do an installation in my root directory. Um, I don't want to install, okay. configure I'm just going to try this uh, dollar home dot yaws probably don't have one of the dependencies. updated. I have so many mysterious PPAs here. What what is what even is that? You know, this machine has been running barely for years with Ubuntu, I think, 18.04, and it's just, it never breaks, and so I never have any incentive to, like, go try a new operating system. 
and you know, I 99% of the time, I just I don't even think about the operating system, which is the best thing you can say about an operating system. Um, okay, I think this is the only one we need. You have held broken packages. search for this error message. I don't want to force installation because I, I mean I'm not going to break my I'm not going to risk breaking my system just to install yaws. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, what? Why does it need ping? Why does it need authentication? It's insane. going to install a new operating system just for this framework. Ah, wait, disable. I saw something. Disable PAM, let's try that. Let's try that. Awesome. Now let's try make install.
Okay. That looks reasonable. Um, hey, it works. And it just has its own documentation as the default. That's clever. Okay. Okay. All right, we got we got it we got it installed. All right, I have no idea why it need. I guess Pam for if it needs to run as a privileged user, which which would make sense if it's a real web server, um, that it would have, sometimes need to run as a privileged user. But you know, <sighs> see, this is the only issue I ever have with Ubuntu is sometimes some arcane software doesn't work because Ubuntu, there, there's nothing on Ubuntu that isn't like at least five years old and most of the time I don't notice but very occasionally I run into something like this and it's typically a pretty minor annoyance and I can get around it. Okay, so let's see. I feel like that's a big that's a big um, What the hell is soap? This doesn't look like anything I give a shit about, so I don't care. Rebar, rebar was useless. Um, Sorry, I'm not reading this out loud. I'm trying. I'm processing the information. I'm sorry. I see. This is, this works a lot differently than what I was expecting.
Okay. Okay, so maybe maybe the next cuz I have my web server. Maybe maybe that maybe that can be like a tiny little project for me is to put this up on orangepill.healthcare and get the um So this is like a this is a full this isn't something you hide behind it, a reverse proxy. This is like a genuine, this is as high quality as Apache. Okay. Wow. I'm actually pretty impressed by this. Because I'm used to stuff like Ruby on Rails or, you know, Yesod or something like that, which you tend to hide behind a reverse proxy, like, you know, Nginx or something. But this looks like no, we're assuming that this is going to be facing the outside world. Okay, but I mean, generally, you would want to run it as an unprivileged user. type of browser is this? Jesus Christ. <laughs> what year did he write this? I mean, he's got to have been working on this for a long time for it to be this nice. I'm just skimming this. That's an interesting idea for Craig, maybe something I can help him with, is having one of the ZX templates be a basic YAWS or a basic cowboy web application. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, this looks pretty simple. I don't know what 
fast CGI is. Hotmail.com, okay. Right, okay. This is what I was wondering about. I don't care about the configuration file. Okay. So I think I think what I'm gonna try to do in the next video. Okay, we got we got it up and run. We got a look we got we got tits on the screen. That's what matters. Okay. That that's what I'll I can't call it that on YouTube, but maybe on, on BitChute I can call it Yaws getting tits on the screen. Um and then, so what I what I have in mind, uh, um, well, let's make sure that this is done. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so here's my home page that I've that is not up on oops. There's my locals, you should have subscribed to that. This is down. And so what idea I had for the HTTP server was okay, well my minimum product is gonna get my website up. Um and so that could maybe I'll do that with Yaws. That, that'll be my little mini project, is getting my website back up and running. Alright, that's fair. I've been going on too long and it's 5 in the morning. I should go to bed. Eh. One hour. Oh, wow. Alright. Well, thank you for watching, if you were watching. Um, Alright. Bye. Founder loves you.